and welcome to Wanted Down Under, the show that catapults a British family right across to the other side of the world to help them make the biggest decision of their life. Ian and Sam French run a thriving nature-watching business in Scotland, but their dream is to move it all to New Zealand. I think it's a natural progression, uh, the next step, so to speak. Not all the family agree. I can't ever imagine myself living here permanently, no. As they confront the reality of leaving older children behind, could the move drive a wedge between Ian and the rest of his family? I told Ian I wanted to get on the next plane and go home. Tension in the uh, French camp this morning. This, this is more important to him than, than his kids. And will daughter Amy have her own plans? I just think it's time for them to let go of us. <laughs> That's quite sad, isn't it? The skill shortage in New Zealand means that anyone whose profession is in demand can apply to move there permanently. And if you want to set up a business, as long as you have the capital, entry requirements are minimal. So for many, the lifestyle on offer is too much to resist, and 18,000 Brits made the move last year. We put another 20 British families to the test by giving them just one week to try out a new life down under. After that, they'll have to vote one way or the other. Will they stay in the UK or will they move to New Zealand? On the west coast of Scotland, Ian and Sam French live with their younger children, 15-year-old Amy and wee Adam, who's three. Older boys, Matt, 18, and Dan, who's 21, have already left home and aren't thinking of emigrating with the rest of the family. Parents Ian and Sam's home is in the remote village of Paulieu, two hours' drive from Inverness. They love being part of a tight-knit community. Although everything's rosy, they've always had a hankering for travel and the family have lived in various parts of the UK. Now it looks as though they've got itchy feet again. I think there are people that are just content with just living in the box and never getting out of it. But you know, once you've been out of that box and you've peeked outside and you see what a big wide world there is out there, you just want to go for more every time. But daughter Amy isn't as keen as her parents. If I go with them, then it'd just be an advantage for them, but I'm not sure. The French family's life in the UK revolves around their family-run wildlife tour business. Hello, how are you? I'd probably love nature more than I love people, to be honest with you. As a marine biologist, Ian would love to see more exotic creatures. After all the years of people saying, oh, have you ever been to New Zealand? It's just like this, but you get more whales and dolphins. That's what started it. I'm going to turn and work with this wind down the lock. Their New Zealand master plan would be to combine a nature tourism operation with an upmarket bed and breakfast business. Welcoming people in, sort of living with you as part of your family, but around the wildlife. If we want to take people in that night, we'll take people in. If we don't, then we'll put the no vacancy sign up. Ian's only too aware of what he stands to lose. In New Zealand, I think it could be hard to match what I've got here. But he also knows that you only get one shot at life. I don't want to regret not doing things. I want to go and see if it's worth doing. And if it is, we'll do it. But they know that they'd have to leave their two older sons, Matt and Dan, behind. Mum Sam is especially concerned about teenager Matt. I can't see us being so far apart from him. So, you know, him being on the other side of the world, um, I just... That's the one thing that I'll really struggle with if we do go. And it's not just Matt she has to worry about. Daughter Amy has close friends at home. I do have a boyfriend, Gareth. I think it'll be quite a part of my decision will be with him, whether I go or not. I hope she'll love it. But yeah, that could be the downside, that she won't settle out there. She, she won't want to stay out there with us. <laughs> 
There's a lot at stake for the French family who would not only need to sell their house, valued at £300,000 in summer 2008, but also their nature sightseeing business and marine wildlife centre. Down under, they'd hope to buy a property for up to £400,000. That's big enough for bed and breakfast guests, who Ian would guide as part of a new wildlife tours business. To help them make their big decision, we found three different ecotourism businesses for the family to investigate. One in the country, one in the city, and one on the coast of the South Island of New Zealand. First, let's take a look at the country lifestyle. The South Island's countryside is really peaceful. Until you hit the ski slopes, which many b, &B guests are going to love. And after a hard day at work on the snow, why not chill out in a luxury lodge in the Kashmir Hills? Prices start from £250,000. A hot air balloon safari company is for sale. All tourism is booming in New Zealand and the average base salary for someone owning a tour business is around £30,000 a year. Owner George Curry really gets into character for his guests. We offer a one-hour flight over some of the most remarkable scenery in the world. Topped off with a champagne-styled breakfast at the end. Eat and first. Ian, this is a very special one for you. Look, so, look. Ian, we know that we are the luckiest people around. You're most welcome when you arrive. So that's the kind of lifestyle they can enjoy in the country. Let's see what's possible in the city on their budget. Christchurch, the cultural capital, offers plenty to excite a family. From street parties to funky markets, daughter Amy is sure to love it here. Not to mention sampling the buzzing nightlife. With a budget of around £400,000, there's a range of spacious homes big enough to take in B&B guests. With this option, the French family could test drive a hiking company and, if Ian likes it, start up his own version. Hilary Wellers, the owner. Ecotourism is a growing industry in New Zealand and I believe it's got a long way to go yet. I've got the best of both worlds here. I can hike all over the lovely South Island and then I come home to Christchurch. It's a perfect city lifestyle. I love running my own business. It's hard work but incredibly satisfying. Make sure you come and see us when you're down under. It looks like their life could shape up pretty well in the city, but what about a new life on the coast? New Zealand's coastline is renowned for its natural beauty. Just south of Christchurch, on the picturesque Banks Peninsula, is a popular village called Akaroa. Set against a dramatic rugged landscape, lavish properties priced at around £320,000 all maximise their window space to take advantage of the fantastic sea views. Ian would spend a trial day with a dolphin watching tour group, giving a great chance to see whether he could start up a similar company of his own. Liz Deppner is the manager. Our business thrives all summer when it's all hands on deck. And if you're really keen, you can get in the water and swim with Hector's dolphins. Ian, Samantha, this is an idyllic lifestyle. You'll love it. I hope to see you when you come to New Zealand. So there were three potential lifestyles for the Frenchies to try. In the country, where a luxury lodge costs £250,000. Living it up in cultural Christchurch, where spacious homes come at a price. Or chilling out on the coast, where lavish properties with sea views will set you back around £320,000. So three very different possibilities for our family to try. So which one did we decide would suit them best? The coastal lifestyle seemed to best match what the Frenchies would be leaving behind in Scotland. They finally make it to Christchurch on New Zealand's South Island after four flights and 36 hours travelling. Amy immediately turns on her phone to see if her boyfriend Gareth has sent a message. I'll probably miss Gareth. <laughs> she already is, aren't you? Mum knows how difficult the week is going to be for Amy. 
Stop that, because you make me well up when you stop well enough. <laughs> the huge journey has made Sam realise how hard it would be to visit her two sons if they stay back in the UK. She feels younger son Matt, at only 18 years old, would miss them the most. Ian's thinking he's a big boy and he'll go off and do his own thing, but it's not going to be just hop on a plane and you're there in an hour and a half. It's months of planning and, and the cost involved. That if, if he doesn't come out with us and settle with us, then you know all of those things have got to be taken into consideration. But at least Ian seems upbeat about the potential move. In my heart, I think, yeah, I would see this as where the family's future lies at the minute. We'll see what that. When we get that's actually the same answer later on. They have a lot to discover, not only about life in New Zealand, but also about themselves as they head off into the unknown. This is Christchurch. We've got to go all the way around the peninsula and to Akaroa Harbour. It's a leisurely 40-minute drive through stunning landscape. Just look at that view. Akaroa Village sits on a natural harbour created by an extinct volcano and has been a well-kept secret for a long time. They'll be overlooking the town in a three-bedroom retro-style rental home with relaxing views. But the peace and tranquility is about to be interrupted. I think it's half past two in the morning and it's, why is it broad daylight? Why have you got me out of my bed? With Ian relaxing and Adam now calm, Amy and Sam explore the bedrooms. Luckily, you see, I sleep on that side of the bed, so I wake up to those views in the morning. That'd be great. I could see myself living here. I don't think you can put a price on this. But their lives would not be complete without Amy. I'm still not sort of convinced. Obviously, your home's your home, so you're more used to that. I suppose once we've seen more of the area and looked at houses and things, I'll have more to judge it on. I mean, at the moment, first impressions are very good. It's lovely. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see what the week brings. <laughs> Back in Scotland, the French's own a four-bedroom character house that they've modernised themselves and is worth about £300,000. After selling the family business as well, they could afford up to a million New Zealand dollars or about £400,000 on a property down under. It's day two and we've lined up three very different properties for the French family to view. Property one with five bedrooms is for sale for £260,000. Estate agent Tracy is keen to show off its heritage. This is um, an Agro Historic Cottage. And you'll see here it's, um, it's got an historic building plaque. It was built in 1878. I'll take you through the living area. And you've got this lovely deck overlooking the harbour. What do you think? History, great. A lot of work. It'll take more than just a lick of paint. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm up for the challenge, really. Ian thinks the furnishings could also do with an upgrade. Hospital beds. Do you like the wallpaper? I had wallpaper like this in the early 80s, before, before I met Ian. Come on, Sam, pull yourself together. We need to go upstairs, but mind your head. So we couldn't have anyone staying who was quite tall then? Well, you, they bang their heads only once, usually. Unless it's a man who never tends to learn from his mistake. Estate agent Tracy pursues the hard sell. It has a lot of space. There's actually a lot of bedroom space. But Sam's overwhelmed by flowers. My head is just spinning from all this wallpaper. I don't think the blooms are growing on Ian either. Perhaps the fragrant decor is best appreciated from under the bed covers. Time to escape. Crooked house. Oh, Ian to pot hole in. <laughs> With renovating not on the cards, it's on to property two on the other side of Akaroa Harbour. It's a four bedroom ultra modern home on the market for a million New Zealand dollars or 390,000 pounds. 
so within the French's budget. Owner Lou Matthews shows them around. Wow, this is lovely. <laughs> is Amy starting to warm to Kiwi homes? I like how um, in New Zealand the houses are all open planned because it makes it feel really big and spacious. And Sam takes Adam to check out the bedroom views. OK. Adam's not only spotted the sea, but somewhere closer to swim. Mommy need to get in the swimming pool. Yeah, maybe later, OK? Yeah, now! Nice little pool, isn't it? I mean, that idea of having guests staying and coming out, this is something that's quite a feature to have. We have to have pool parties. <laughs> 29. Typically tropical, I think. It can be a healthy breakfast, look, or your grapefruit. Come here! Ian seems taken with the exotic fruit, but what's his overall impression? What I'd like is something uh, maybe a bit more space around it, because, I mean, obviously you've got a lot of properties yeah. here. That would be the only thing that we really have to get used to, is having other properties around us. It's something that we don't have really where we are at the minute. We'll see what we can do then with the last property. It's just outside Akaroa, so there's more space to enjoy the views. This stylish four-bedroom house is on the market for an affordable £315,000. Sarah Jones has brought up her family here. This is our home. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, it's nice. Give you a bit of a tour around. Yes, yes, please. So this is the main living area. I like the house itself. It's lovely, but <laughs> the weather's just like being back at home, isn't it? <laughs> it's amazing how a southerly can start, and 15 minutes later, it's gone from complete sunshine, and you get the waves running over the sea wall. So. Still, it's exciting still, still to watch. Though, even the yeah, bad weather's nice, I think. It's just lovely. It's very modern, and, and there wouldn't be anything to do. We could, we could move into this, not have to spend any money. This is just what we're looking for. Good, and things just keep getting better as Sam sees the master bedroom. It's a walk-in wardrobe! <laughs> the main bedroom with a walk-in wardrobe. <laughs> Yeah, this would do for me. In the double garage, Adam looks like he's taken after his dad's love of boats. Like father and son. And he's even created an image of him. I'm loving daddy! Beautiful. I've got more air than that. All the rooms open out to the hill and down to the sea. If we we're going to stay, we we're going to have the spa here. We we're going to have like woodland. You've got a lot of land there that you you could put a little self-catering lodge. The surrounding houses are these all relatively new people, and you know these people. Yes, yeah, so, I mean we were one of the first to build. They've all kind of popped up around us. Oh dear! It seems as though new builds are popping up everywhere. If we could take this and put it on a hillside with no other properties, I'd like, I'd like to see it when whatever's being built is done. But the hammering on the next plot has given Sam an idea. Brewers, I think, buying a section and having a house built to our specification would be perfect. We showed the French family three very different homes and they're even thinking they could build their own. So did they prefer what they saw here or property back home? One, two, three... New Zealand! <laughs> Only Amy has doubts. Just in the houses that we've seen, really, and all the houses that you see from the outside, they're really close together and you'll have a lot of neighbours and it. Just sort of being really close to other people, it's not what you're used to living where we I do. I can't believe that. If we could buy a plot of land, not buy a property, buy a plot of land and have as a long house as it's not built. in between those of others. Mum and Dad have got a lot of convincing to do. Ian and Sam have made a success of their business in Scotland, but how easy would it be for Ian to repeat that success in New Zealand? Ian is keen to get out and see how possible it would be to run his own dolphin watching company. But Sam is upset as she's had a phone call from their son, Matt, back in the UK. He's distraught about breaking up with his girlfriend. It's caused a family rift, which could hold the trip into jeopardy. 
While Ian leaves for the harbour, Amy does her best to cheer her mum up with some ice cream. Matt rang me. He sounds really down and he just wants to get out of where he's staying and he needs somewhere to go. And we'd normally be there, and we're not. <laughs> Have another ice cream. So, uh, yeah. It looks like Sam's really feeling the 12,000-mile distance from Matt, but Ian wants to get to work. Come halfway around the world to see some pretty rare creatures and to miss it. It seems a little bit uh, silly. Tension in the uh, French camp this morning. As soon as he sets sail, family problems are way over the horizon. Yes. On the first of two planned cruises today, Ian's researching how this dolphin watching business operates. What sort of number of passengers do you think you take? You know, with the number of tourists that are around during that summer period, yeah. four boats, and we do four trips a day. So you're getting some big numbers there. Gosh, it certainly looks like he could make a living. But back on dry land, Sam is far from convinced. I'm sure Ian will want to come out after spending this morning with dolphins. But you see, the other thing he's got to remember is it's not a holiday. Once you move to a place and you're actually working in the place, you don't see the place in the same way. I think we've both got to want it. And I think one of us probably wants it more than the other one at the moment. While Ian's enjoying being close to the wildlife he loves, he's also very concerned for it. The actual swimming with dolphins is a marine biologist. I'm not sure whether that would be uh, such a good thing. The disturbance is probably one of the biggest causes of dolphins moving away from an area. Ian looks on anxiously as the eager tourists hit the water. But he's reassured the dolphins are equally happy to be there. We can have them in the water for 45 minutes, yeah. and sometimes they'll stay with us for the whole 45 yeah. minutes. Sometimes they might stay for 20 minutes, get a bit bored, go away and have a feed, you know? Yeah. And it's nice to bring people out, you know? They, they come out and interact with something that's so wild and, and nearly extinct. So the dolphins aren't uh, too bothered at the minute. I mean, they certainly look like they're enjoying it. I mean, that's, that's part of what dolphins do. Ian's more at ease about the idea of swimming with dolphins, but back on shore, Sam's now having doubts about the whole enterprise. It's always been this dream, hasn't it? And now we're here and it's real. And I'm thinking I just want to go home because I'm, I feel... Um, I feel helpless here for, like, things that are going on at home at the minute. I, I just want to be there to be able to sort things out and I'm missing people, so... You know, already it's only been three days and we're already missing sort of having a friend just to... Um, just to talk to. Upbeat about his morning dolphin watching, Ian meets up with manager Liz. We're looking at moving here uh, to set up a business for doing similar to what you're doing. Right. What advice can you give me? We're under really strict rules and regulations from the New Zealand Department of Conservation okay. and we all we all operate on permits. They involve a substantial sum of money. They're currently not actually issuing any more of those permits for another right. five year period. You would need to be looking at sort of trying to pick up a business that, that's actually for sale. But not the black cat too. Not the black cat, no the black cat's not for sale. <laughs> So it looks like heavy regulations to protect the animals mean Ian can't easily set up his own cruises. But he could charter this existing boat for his guests. So on the afternoon tour, how well could he handle being a guide in these unfamiliar waters? Back at the house, Sam can't stop thinking about their son, Matt. I just want to be there with him and get it sorted. I told Ian I wanted to get on the next plane, go home, and let him you can stay and do what he wants. Because it's obviously this is more important to him than than his kids at the minute. That's how it seems to me, and it shouldn't be. Yeah, I'd rather be at home at the minute. I've never really seen a reaction like that before. Worrying. It is a bit worrying, yeah, because now I'm thinking, saying, well, Mum's saying she wants to go home and stuff. I just hope they'll get it sorted and they'll be able to phone Matt, probably just text him and tell him to stop being such a drama queen or something. 
because it's, ma it's making mum worry and it's making her not enjoy being here. And it's a bit silly to go all the way back across the world just to help him out when it will probably be nothing. I hope she doesn't get the next flight home. I'd be a bit disappointed if that happens. Back on the boat, it's Ian's big moment to impress. Hey, I'm going to pass you on to Ian French. He's going to tell you just a little bit more about his opinion of the Hector's Dolphins. Hey, Mish, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for allowing me a couple of minutes to talk. Uh, just off about 11 o'clock, just uh, chasing a couple of fish there. You know, these little creatures keep swimming to stay warm, so this is one of the reasons why they're always actively looking for food just off the front. I think he's got all the knowledge behind him. He knows his stuff. Yeah, we're looking at the uh, quite a young one, uh, New Zealand fur seal, and it's uh, looking like it's just about to drop into the water. So uh, there it goes, just having a roll around there in the uh, kelp and just to get itself freshened up before it's off for a feed. So how does Skipper Hamish rate Ian's expertise? He's got the passion, I think, about the wildlife, which is something that's obvious. It's, uh, it's only going to do well for himself. Ian's day has gone well, but as he heads back, he's worried how to console Sam. I've been married to her 23 years and I still don't understand it. Not a clue. If I had to vote today, it would be the UK, without a doubt. Just family. It's more important. So, you know, you really don't, you don't think it's going to be as hard. It's time for Ian to vote and where he'd prefer to carry on his business. What an uh, experience today's been. Uh, I think the decision will be New Zealand. We've got lots of fact finding to do because it's you know I don't want to come all this way. And day three, we're Ian's going in one direction, I'm going in the other. As Ian returns, he hopes Sam's worries will have passed. Oh, how we have these tiffs every now and then, and then you just get over it. But he finds the rest of his family still in a sombre mood, apart from Adam. Hey, up, Adam. Yeah. Ian decides to show the pictures he took on the boat to Adam. Watch, watch, watch this coming. While Amy and Sam wait for a call from Matt back home. Overnight, the family talk through their differences, and next day things are looking brighter. Did Matt phone earlier then to talk to him? Yeah, he rang about, well, he woke me up. <laughs> he rang at six o'clock this morning. He's fine, he's going home for the weekend. He's probably gonna have a party. <laughs> Everything's fine, we're all... Happy, 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 happy. <laughs> or are they? Like the Frenchies, most of us like to think we're more ecologically aware these days. But how environmentally friendly is New Zealand? This is the country as it's perceived from the outside. But is all of New Zealand really that idyllic? The New Zealand marketing machine uh, certainly markets New Zealand as very green. The reality is probably somewhat different. While many Kiwis think they're green with their solar panels, over half of New Zealand homes have two cars or more, one of which is usually a four-wheel drive gas guzzler. And there are many badly insulated old homes. Energy consumption per person in New Zealand is pretty high. It's up there with the Australians and the Americans. We're probably where England was 10 years ago. But things are improving as Europeans arrive with their eco hats on. And we're seeing a lot more recycling are changing to smaller cars, energy efficient buildings being made. Michael's house is totally powered by solar panels, wind and even water turbines for electricity. Well, I was tempted with this dream to come to New Zealand and cut down a few trees and build your own place and live off the grid. And, and that's pretty much what we did. 
and on a national scale, at least 50% of the country's electricity is from renewable resources. But they still rely heavily on old coal power stations. There's a huge potential here to be green, and I think there's a huge potential here to influence other people to be green. So what are Michael's top tips to ensure that New Zealand continues to look like this? Buy a good, fuel-efficient, small petrol or diesel car when you arrive, uh, preferably a new one. Recycle and do what you can, really. You don't have to be perfect. Um, just do your bit. The Frenchies live in Scotland, but dream of moving their family nature-watching business to New Zealand, where the wildlife is plentiful and the scenery even more breathtaking. I don't think you can put a price on this. They love the million-dollar properties. This is just what we're looking for. Ian was confident he could set up a wildlife tour business. New Zealand fur seal, and it's uh, looking like it's just about to drop into the water. But Sam's thoughts were with her son, who's left back home. I feel helpless here. We'd normally be there, and we're not. How will they react to messages from friends and family? And would a move finally split them? Now it's time for them to leave us to live our dreams. <gasps> and it's just a shame we can't all be in one place and it all be together. The French family are contemplating a new life and a new lifestyle in New Zealand. They're off to check out how everyone might enjoy the beach lifestyle. Yeah! Before a picnic lunch, Adam heads straight for the water. I want to see Adam growing up, the other three. Grow up when I was working. I can spend more time with Adam now and uh, bring him up as an outdoor child. And he's loving it, as you can see. Yeah, I can get used to this. I've settled into this now. I'm quite... It's now a rumble ball. I'm quite happy. I can see myself settling here. I couldn't at the beginning of the week, but, yeah, I'm at the point now where I'm... I can't see myself going home at the minute. I'm moving on from this, so... That's complete opposite to what I was feeling earlier in the week. Perhaps with her new enthusiasm, Mum Sam can now persuade Amy to join them in the move. I think if you thought I was coming with you here itself, you'd be a bit stupid because there's nothing here for me. There's a bit Christ church, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm not saying I'm going to move here itself, am I? I don't know, I've got friends and... Yeah, but when you all go off to separate universities, you're not going to see each other all the time anyway. We'll still be in the same country, though, won't we? My friends don't live here, so it'd be quite hard Imagine him moving to a new country, having to make new friends and start a new life. It's a nice place and it's lovely weather this week, so it sort of sold itself with the weather, but I can't ever imagine myself living here permanently, no. I'd love all of them to be out here with us um, and to, you know, for us all to be really close. We don't live in each other's pockets at the minute. I mean, I don't want that. But I would like to have my family in the same country as me. Sam is adamant that Amy should make the move to New Zealand, but will she be able to convince her for the lifestyle vote? Well, that's if Adam can dig up the flags. So, Adam, give us the yeah. flags. We've got to vote on lifestyle. Do we prefer a lifestyle yeah. back at home? Or do we prefer it here chillaxing on the beach in New Zealand? Chillax. Um, what? New, New Zealand. Zealand! New Zealand! Yay! Oh, that's really good. Thank you. As their week draws to an end, the family must consider the impact on loved ones if they're to make the move. With older sons Dan and Matthew unlikely to join them, there's a lot at stake. Watch this. Hi, mate, it's Gareth here, your boyfriend, as you know. Um, we're missing you all a lot here, and uh, it's hard without you. Everyone's missing you. I'm missing you, of course. I've always thought they're quite cool parents. All my friends always thought they were. We'd always be able to have a laugh with my dad. He'd always 
you know, be the one, oh, here's, here's a sneaky drink and things when you're 16, 17 years old. Ian's a psychopath. <laughs> um, he is one of the most amazing wildlife people you will ever meet. Because he's a qualified marine biologist, he knows what he's talking about. Whenever we've been on his boat, we very, feel very proud. Yes, we're proud of what he's done and what he's achieved. Mum um, is very family-centred. She's come from a close family where they always spend a lot of time together, and I think it's rubbed off on her. Amy's just fun to be around, and you can have a good laugh with her, and, yeah, she's just a lovely person. If Amy went for good, New Zealand immigrated, it would be quite upsetting, because she's a caring person. She's a great person to be with. Really fun just being with her. Oh, I think it'll be a dreadful pull if Emma didn't go. I mean, with being the only daughter, she's always been special. I don't think they would go if, if Amy didn't want to go myself. Do you? I can't believe that Amy wouldn't go with them. I can't think Amy would want to stay without her parents. Know. If they do go, then I hope they find... I hope they find a place as special as this. <laughs> it's got a magic about it that people that... If you don't understand it, then you won't really know what we're talking about. <laughs> you have to experience it, I think, before you you really fall in love with a place like this. Yeah. I hope they find a, a place that that they can actually plug into and connect to as much as they have here. If they do decide to go, I think I will be devastated. I'm sure we both will. It, in one respect, it's almost like a bereavement. Yeah. Without the finality of it. Yes, we would certainly uh, feel the wrench. I'm sorry. Don't worry about Matthew. I can take care of him if he ever has any problems uh, back in the UK. I think you should uh, grab this opportunity uh, with both hands and take it. Go for it. Don't hesitate because it comes once in a lifetime and uh, we can come out and see you if you're unlucky enough. <laughs> um, all the best. <laughs> don't really think of yourself that big and it'd be quite big-headed if you thought people cared about you so much. And they don't tell you that every day, but to hear it, it makes you value your friendship with people. I knew so many people cared about us. It's put me on a downer again now. <laughs> but there's one important family member who didn't want to send a video message. Teenage son Matt instead preferred to write a letter. Dear Mum, Dad, Amy and Adam, I hope you have all had a wonderful time in New Zealand. This opportunity only comes once in a lifetime, so I really do hope you make the right decision for yourselves. As long as you are all happy, I will be happy. Of course, I would miss you all a lot but would also love knowing that my family is living the life most people dream of. Love to you all, Matt. Sam is inconsolable. Will the letter put her heart back in the UK before the final vote? It's certainly been a turbulent week for the Frenchies. Ian and Sam were taken by the impressive properties they saw. And Ian got close to nature, proving he had the potential to run a successful business in New Zealand. But Sam's thoughts had turned to family back home. Ian is going in one direction, I'm going in the other. Tension in the uh, French camp this morning. If I had to vote today, it would be the UK, without a doubt. But the beach lifestyle changed her mind again. I can't see myself going home at the minute. It's daughter Amy who could finally sway the decision. I can't ever imagine myself living here. Permanently, The trial week has come to an end. Ian's passion for New Zealand's wildlife has been unwavering. The biggest surprise is how tropical the place is. To sit here in the crater of a volcano, looking at all these um, uh, trees and bushes and fruits growing, and see, it's been a good experience. I'm glad we've come. If they make the move, he'll have more time with young Adam. Yeah, little boy and his daddy. Well, we could do that, couldn't we? Yeah. Go fishing? Yeah. Go fishing. It's good, isn't it?
even Ian was shaken by hearing messages from home. I see my mum on uh, camera there. I did start to feel a bit guilty about wanting to come out here. And at one point, I think, well, I better vote Great Britain and stay there for my mum and dad's sake. But it's Sam who's found it hardest to decide. I learnt a lot about myself. It's been a real roller coaster of emotions. But I think, um, I think I know where I am now. I think I'm decided. She changes all the time, faster than I change my underwear. If Sam says UK in the final vote now, then uh, it'll be a tense plane ride back. <laughs> we might sit across the, across the uh, other side of the plane. You know, a lot of things happening at home that I, I just feel that I'm not in control of at the minute. Uh, and knowing that if we come out here, that I'll have even less control, um, that, that's difficult for a mum to, to deal with. Um, but I'm going to have to learn. I'm going to have to, uh, to learn to step back and let my, my family grow up without me. <gasps> the reality of leaving older children behind is hitting home to Sam. So could 15-year-old Amy leave her parents to live on the other side of the world? The thought of all our dreams being so different, it's just a shame we can't all be in one place and it all be together. I'm filling up. <laughs> It's just the realisation that they might actually come here one day <laughs> and how like upset mum's got about leaving us behind and I think they've got to realise that they've done a really good job as parents bringing us up <laughs> but now it's time for them to leave us to live our dreams and <laughs> they can settle here and hopefully retire here and have a good life without us. <laughs> I just think it's time for them to let go of us. <laughs> That's quite sad, isn't it? <laughs> As the Frenchies consider their final decision, they take a walk to the lighthouse. But they're not telling each other which way they plan to vote. It's crunch time. We're at the end of the week, and uh, what's the decision we're going to make? Do we want to start our new life down under in New Zealand, or if in doubt, stay with the life we've got in Scotland. One, two, three... Yeah. New Zealand! New Zealand! Oh, good you made the right choice! <laughs> to the delight of the locals, all but Amy have voted for New Zealand. Some surprised me, I thought she'd go with the... Uh, Scotland after seeing what they've said on the DVD. This is long term and we will do it. Where's mine? <laughs> and I'm so glad that you Where's took mine? I thought you were gonna waver. <laughs> waver? Why? Adam, give me a hug. I was the one who started all this. <laughs> 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 The French family's experience shows what a huge decision it is for any family with teenagers to emigrate. It might not happen right away, but once they come to terms with leaving older children behind, the Frenchies look set to start a new life down under. And still down under, it's the second semi-final in the Australian Open. You can catch Rafael Nadal and Fernando Vadasco live on the red button right now. And here on BBC One, a house where time has stood still. We're off to the auctions next. Hello and welcome to Wanted Down Under, the show that catapults a British family right across to the other side of the world to help them make the biggest decision of their life. Ian and Sam French run a thriving nature-watching business in Scotland. But their dream is to move it all to New Zealand. I think it's a natural progression, uh, the next step, so to speak. Not all the family agree. I can't ever imagine myself living here permanently, no. As they confront the reality of leaving older children behind, could the move drive a wedge between Ian and the rest of his family? I told Ian I wanted to get on the next plane and go home. Tension 
in the uh, French camp this morning. So this is more important to him than, than his kids. And will daughter Amy have her own plans? I just think it's time for them to let go of us. <laughs> That's quite sad, isn't it? <laughs> The skill shortage in New Zealand means that anyone whose profession is in demand can apply to move there permanently. And if you want to set up a business, as long as you have the capital, entry requirements are minimal. So for many, the lifestyle on offer is too much to resist, and 18,000 Brits made the move last year. We put another 20 British families to the test by giving them just one week to try out a new life down under. After that, they'll have to vote one way or the other. Will they stay in the UK or will they move to New Zealand? On the west coast of Scotland, Ian and Sam French live with their younger children, 15-year-old Amy and wee Adam, who's three. Older boys, Matt, 18, and Dan, who's 21, have already left home and aren't thinking of emigrating with the rest of the family. Parents Ian and Sam's home is in the remote village of Paulieu, two hours' drive from Inverness. They love being part of a tight-knit community. Although everything's rosy, they've always had a hankering for travel and the family have lived in various parts of the UK. Now it looks as though they've got itchy feet again. I think there are people that are just content with just living in the box and never getting out of it. But you know, once you've been out of that box and you've peeked outside and you see what a big wide world there is out there, you just want to go for more every time. But daughter Amy isn't as keen as her parents. If I go with them, then it'd just be an advantage for them, but I'm not sure. The French family's life in the UK revolves around their family-run wildlife tour business. Hello, how are you? I'd probably love nature more than I love people, to be honest with you. As a marine biologist, Ian would love to see more exotic creatures. After all the years of people saying, oh, have you ever been to New Zealand? It's just like this, but you get more whales and dolphins. That's what started here. I'm going to turn and work with this wind down the lock. Their New Zealand master plan would be to combine a nature tourism operation with an upmarket bed and breakfast business. Welcoming people in, sort of living with you as part of your family, but around the wildlife. If we want to take people in that night, we'll take people in. If we don't, then we'll put the no vacancy sign up. Ian's only too aware of what he stands to lose. In New Zealand, I think it could be hard to match what I've got here. But he also knows that you only get one shot at life. I don't want to regret not doing things. I want to go and see if it's worth doing. And if it is, we'll do it. But they know that they'd have to leave their two older sons, Matt and Dan, behind. Mum Sam is especially concerned about teenager Matt. I can't see us being so far apart from him. So, you know, him being on the other side of the world, 